Fred Hollows, former Australian of the Year and one of the country's living saints. Fred's been crook lately, so ill he spent a month in hospital in Brisbane in the latest round of his battle against the multiple cancers which threaten his life. But when many others might be tempted to stay home and enjoy what time is left, Fred's been in Vietnam, bringing the gift of sight. Christopher Zinn went on a mercy flight inside Vietnam with Professor Fred Hollows. Good day. Professor Frederick Cossum Hollows is not your average sort of eye surgeon. He doesn't work from swank consulting rooms, nor are his patients members of the elite. Poor little thing, eh? But she's, she's doing very well, isn't she? Put your glasses back on, beautiful one. <laughs> she's a beauty, isn't she? Instead, the man who swears like a wharfie, but has the compassion of a saint, helps those he identifies with most, the poor and the blind. Last month, he was seriously ill, bedridden in Brisbane after radical cancer therapy. Today, he's defying the doctors and the odds by visiting Vietnam, but perhaps his most ambitious project to date. We have now landed at Hanoi Airport. For this outspoken ophthalmologist, there just isn't the time to be ill. There's still far too much to be done. Tired of the red tape which ties up most aid projects, he's found a way to help the Vietnamese help themselves. Perhaps only Fred, as he's known by one and all, could make it happen, as he's done helping the Eritreans of Africa, the Nepalese, and his mates, the Aborigines. 28, 29, 30. He's bought the means to begin restoring the sight of up to half a million Vietnamese, blinded by an easily curable condition. I've always had a soft spot for Vietnam, rather like Eritrea, uh, a, a heroic country, fought for its independence for a long, long time, jealous of its own reputation, and uh, the sort of country where we think, given a bit of assistance, uh, it'll do things. There are 70 million people in Vietnam, the world's 12th most populous nation, in one of the most fertile parts of the earth. Every year, 130,000 people, young and old, need surgery to correct cataract blindness. But only a handful receive it. It's a debilitating and preventable condition which blights the whole society. This eye is still very single. But this, this eye is very bad for your bad vision. This, and this can be cured with one operation? Yeah, yeah, this can be cured. Let's decide that as we go. Fred's brought along a crack team of eye experts to join the effort. The first day on Monday they, they include the, uh, Dr. Joe Dalzell <laughs> and Dr. Stephanie Young from Sydney, who've taken leave without pay to do their bit. <laughs> from Nepal, Dr. Sandak Ruit, a long-time Hollows friend and protege. Day one and the team arrive at their home for the next two weeks. The patients are bewildered by the news of the wild Australian surgeon who flouts medical convention but gives them hope. The operating theatre is basic by Western standards. The heat and humidity render it stifling. The Vietnamese staff might only earn $10 a month, but they're dedicated and hungry to learn everything Fred's modern equipment can teach them. You have um, not enough money, not enough instruments and uh, equipment. And that's why uh, Professor Fat Hallows understand our situation. That's the sort of microscope we hope to be able to make here in Vietnam. <laughs> Fred's bought sophisticated operating microscopes and video tools to start training up a new generation of eye surgeons to take modern ophthalmology into the country. Teach the teachers first. Mm -hmm. And then the teachers can teach others and then... Finally, everything's ready. The first patients are lined up for a pre-operative examination, hollow style. Why has he got a cataract of 44? Well, we have many uh, cases like that. Now, don't give me that bullshit. Tell me why he's got a unilateral cataract. And yet more medical students learn that Professor Hollows doesn't suffer fools gladly. How, how old's Wynne? 70. Really? Well, what's he doing with cataracts? But in an instant, he's showing them how best to do the job. 
Why is he got cataracts? That's how. Our congenital cataracts. Day two, and the moments arrived. The operation begins to remove the cloudy cataract, which no longer lets clear light into the eye. Fred? Yes? Can you see I'm eating there now? Yes, yeah, it's your digesting slowly. Come on, Reed, I told everybody you put them in in one go. The drugs Fred must take have affected his dexterity, and he can't operate. But that doesn't stop him directing all the action, seeming oblivious of his own health. Oh, you're going to use that hole, are you? Oh, pretty fancy, huh? We had it planned that had Fred not been able to come, for whatever reason, the team was coming. Obviously, it would have been a great um, tragedy not to have him with us. Is there any spirit? Despite his, uh, his gruff abuse from time to time, he, uh, he has a remarkable way of... Um, instructing people and he will act as a good mediator between the surgeon on the table and the student surgeons in the audience. Put your hand up there. No, 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 look, look. Fred administers the anaesthetics with his customary bedside manner. Look there, don't blink, you're all right. In this case, his first patient is Mr. Bao, a former Vietnamese ambassador in Canberra. Did quite a few of these on the young wounded in Eritrea. Sometimes they're hard as bloody rocks. Four fingers. Pressure on now Mr. Bao's operation can proceed. It's a very common operation. It's not common enough. It needs to be about six times more common. Once the cataract has been removed, it must be replaced. In the past, that meant wearing thick, unwieldy spectacles. Now there's a much better alternative. This is the tiny lens which, when inserted in the eye, can do so much. Made in the West, they cost an impossibly expensive $200 in Vietnam, but if they can be made here, the price could drop to just $2. Not much to save somebody's sight. This is the key to Fred's vision. Lenses made in Vietnam by the Vietnamese at an affordable price. A prototype of the factory is already assembled in Wollongong, ready for shipping to Eritrea. What Vietnam has to have is the means of taking out cataracts and putting in intraocular lenses spread far and wide throughout this country. If the proof of the pudding is in the seeing, Mr. Bao is certainly one satisfied customer, even if he doesn't quite understand Fred's advice. Don't get drunk this afternoon, yeah. In a turn up for the books, Fred is joining the ranks of the Rockefellers and the Fords by being turned into a charitable foundation. Right now, there's only one thing standing between Fred Hollows and his dream of a lens factory for Vietnam. That's about a million dollars. A king's ransom to these people, but one which he believes the Australian public will give to pass on perhaps one of the greatest gifts of all, sight. Some of Fred's friends are concerned at the pace he maintains. But despite the recent hospital stay, he says he's feeling just fine. I'm not going to die this week, anyway, and probably not the week after. Meanwhile, there's more work to do. What's the motto of the Fred Hollows Foundation? Leave the world a better place. And that's what we're trying to do. Marvellous man, Fred, and a marvellous Australian. You can help Professor Hollows realise his vision to leave the world a better place Call the Fred Hollows Foundation on 00 to help. 00 Coming up a little later in the program. Innocent college girls, preyed on by an escort agency. I would say at least 65% of the girls that I ever employed were students of one form or another. <laughs>